Think Gadget Reviews, News, and All About It. Play a review. What we want is something a bit risky. Something to take a gamble on. An indie, alterna OS phone with heart. Something like the 4.5 in Hoya, the very first smartphone from the company of the same name. As with its cohorts in 2014's new wave of slightly bonkers, exotic phones, the two-screened Yoda phone and the cyanogen mod-friendly Oppo N1, it has a fresh OS is cheaper than regular high-end handsets and still runs in relatively tight-knit circles. You won't see a line of heads bent over Jala's on the 827 to Paddington any time soon. That said, there's only a small percentage of people we'd recommend the Hoya to. Why? Because if glowing dots in swipeable email apps don't get you hot under the collar, there are many better specs more straightforward and stable smartphones out there for the money. So what does Hoya do differently? And why do we love it despite its many, obvious limitations? Thumb, meet Sailfish. Android is out. This Linux-based smartphone runs Hoya's own Sailfish OS, a gesture-based beta with a debt to Nokia's, and Intel's, doomed Mego OS. Not surprising considering Hoya was created by ex-Nokia employees, a big chunk of the internet thinks the Hoya is an unofficial Nokia N9 resurrection. Sailfish isn't an OS that you'll lust after having spent 5 minutes with, coming from Android or iPhone, the swipes and shortcuts feel unintuitive and it's easy to get lost. There are no physical or capacitive buttons on the front of the Hoya, either. But spend a week with it and it's easy to come around to sailfish. It's far from perfect but the simple idea of letting your fingers and thumbs stay on the touch screen the whole time, rather than moving to press buttons, makes for a speedy, non-stop experience. So how does it work? A basic notifications list is a swipe up from the bottom of the screen, fairly standard. But swiping left from the right of the screen minimizes the app you're in and takes you to a home screen of open apps, like BB10's active frames. Only 9 are shown on the one home view screen, but as you hold down and delete, other open apps take their place. Check out our full Hoya gallery here. Pulling the screen down in most Hoya apps brings up a list of options for things such as changing settings, sharing search and sending messages or emails, this is the getting things done gesture. And finally glowing dots in the top left hand corner show you which page you're on like tech tinkerbells guiding the way. Swipe left or right for forwards and backwards. For examples, when viewing a photo you can swipe right once to return to photos and right again to the main gallery menu. Learning the system is an investment, but use the Hoya for 3 to 4 days and your thumb will take on a life of its own, racing around sailfish with fluid efficiency. And it's a very well presented, pretty UI with glowing sliders and toggles, grids of letters and teardrop shaped icons. There are design flourishes everywhere, we set the time more than once because we enjoyed it so much. Still, niggles abound. The browser needs more work as navigating is a bit of a chore, and while most apps are see-through, iOS 7 style, to show your ambience, that is home screen background, some, such as email, switch to a boring, but more readable, monochrome design in app. It's just not consistent yet. Sailfish does have the basics covered, easy to use people, messaging, email and media, music, apps, plus here maps which, like calculator, notes and other essentials, has to be downloaded from the Hoya store. Nothing is pushed on users, which is largely great, but apps are also a bit of a mess overall. Hoya apps with a side of Android. There's no getting round it, it's slim pickings on the Hoya app store. With about 200 or so to choose from, if you want a battery or data tracker you're in luck. If you want a casually addictive side scroller, not so much. The store itself is laid out to help you see what other Hoya users are downloading, but a quick swipe brings up more traditional categories. A few stuff recommendations, Tweetion, a Twitter client, Sailbox for Dropbox, 
and blue hail for Evernote are all useful workarounds, and the esteemed snake makes an appearance. It's not enough, though, and Hoya knows it, which is why the smartphone runs Android apps, too. By installing third-party Android app stores such as Hoya's go-to Yindex store, which actually played up rather a lot for us during testing, Amazon and Aptoyite, the Hoya gets access to proper apps such as Netflix, Facebook, Kindle, and Jetpack Joyride. It's straightforward even for Android and no OBS, Yandex problems aside, and the choice is there. Phew, right? Well, yes, but also no. Android apps just don't run as smoothly here as we're used to, even on budget and mid-range droids. And to get full access to Google Play you need to dig into developer mode and risk bricking the device, Hoya tells us it will still fix your phone if that happens, but it does void the warranty. Running Android apps also turns the Hoya into an OS and app experience of two halves, you can't swipe from the right out of Android apps. Icons spoil the grid of teardrops and you even get the Android back button and multitasking screen. Two-sided design Talking of two halves, like a chunky wafer in a black and white movie or a stretched out licorice all sort, our black Hoya comes with a white rear panel that can be removed for access to the microSIM slot, microSD card slot and swappable battery. Hoya's additional backplates, selling for around 30 US dollars are, in fact, NFC-equipped smart covers that can add ringtones and ambiences, themes, via NFC tags to the phone in a quasi-modular system. We haven't tried out the other half accessories yet but Hoyas released an SDK to 3D print cases with instructions of where to place the NFC tags. It's a fantastic idea but one without a killer use just yet, we want to see a work mode other half, guest mode other half or even in the future a wireless charging other half. With a similar size to the HTC One, the Hoya is neither skinny at 9.9mm nor feather light at 141 grams, but its chunk does make it easy to hold. With a case snapped on its sturdy, too, and looks like etching in a retro sort of way, opposite curves on the two edges, big bezels, everything 2014 smartphones don't do but it works, and it doesn't look quite like any other phone. And isn't that why you went all off-piste with your handset choice? There's no HD screen but the Hoyas 4.5 in 540x960 display is still surprisingly lovely. Colors are accurate and not too overcooked, blacks look inky, there's good contrast, and although it misses some of the finer details due to downscaling, it can play 720p and 1080p videos. If you're going to use the Hoya for reading lots of text, catching up on tech news, say, the low resolution quickly becomes apparent. We'd like it to go brighter, too, both for watching movies and for when you're using it as a camera viewfinder. Viewing angles are also only so-so. That might be fine on a bargain basement blower, but this is a 330 pounds phone, which means Hoya's simply a bit behind in the pixel wars. Having said that it is responsive, Sailfish itself looks great and Gorilla Glass 2 gives it good protection. So-so performance It's not just pixels that are missing, on paper the Hoya doesn't look too powerful either, with an aging dual-core 1.4 GHz Snapdragon processor and 1 GB of RAM. Day-to-day -day it's respectable and playing the best of the Amazon App Store's games doesn't fluster it, but as we mentioned earlier, Android apps strip it up and the Hoya can get stuck on pull-down options. Downloads of apps and files from Dropbox are fairly nippy, but we did have some connection problems to both Wi-Fi networks and a portable hotspot. And browsing isn't as fast as we're used to, with the Hoya scoring a mediocre 1583.1 ms on the SunSpider 1.0.2 benchmark. It's not all bad news, the Hoya supports 4G, not always a given at this price, and has a microSD card slot for expanding storage by up to 64GB. It might be a little slow but in other ways it's great value.